they said it couldn't be done. But he's here. 99 overall signature series Derek Jeter done all no money spent that's right we got it done we said that we were gonna get the live series collections done in under a month we want to get it done before May being all no money spent and guess what we did it and this is how so before I get into how, how I did this and how I did this so efficiently and quickly do me a favor if you're new to the channel please subscribe it's absolutely free and it lets you know when more videos are uploaded as soon as possible also if you enjoy this video or you found it helpful do me a favor click that like button it, it very much helps with the algorithms and getting the videos out to more people that being said let's get into it there are three main strategies that I use to make sure that I can complete this quickly and efficiently, no money spent. Number one, sell everything. Number two, do all of the programs. Number three, flip, 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 flip. Flip those cards. I'm gonna go a little more in depth with all these strategies, especially the flipping, so make sure that you watch the entire video. So the main thing that I did to make sure that I was able to get this done quickly is I pretty much sold every card that was not a 90 plus live series. So I actually only pulled one 90 plus live series the entirety of all my pack openings and I have not bought any packs. Don't buy packs. They're a waste of money. They're a waste of stubs. Just don't do it. There's, there's no point, especially with the way they're doing sets. Avoid it. No packs. Sell every card that you have. Oh, actually, we should, we should be putting in some of our guys here, no? Okay, so now we got we got all our guys in here. We got Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, Derek Jeter. We got Jeets, D Jeets. And uh, <laughs> I'm excited because now it's like, I can finally play the game. I don't have to do grinding for stubs anymore. Um, so yeah, so let's go, we'll go through and what, what I did to be able to do this, this quickly, this efficiently. So, like I was saying, the best way to do this is to sell every card that is not a 90 plus live series. Every single one, pretty much, as soon as you get it, sell it. Sell it, sell it, sell it. And then what you want to do is you want to start buying the most expensive cards. They're not, they're not, they're not getting cheaper. They're not. Most of them are getting more expensive, especially guys like Mookie Betts. Uh, I wish people listened to me, people in my comments saying like, oh, it's, it's not... They're, uh, they're going down. Yeah, well, now they're exploding, okay? They, it, nothing is linear. It doesn't just go like this. You know, it's going to move up and down, up and down, and then eventually it's just going to go up, especially as people tend to do the cheaper collections first. That means the more expensive collections are only going to get more expensive as people are jockeying for those cards. You know, it's a supply and demand thing. So you want to get it early. Because early on, even though the supply of these cards is low, not too many people are worried about getting those cards. So people are, are trying to list, like say they pulled the trout, they're trying to list it, and no one's buying it. So the prices stay relatively low. But they're going to start to upshoot, especially within the next few weeks as people are, are finishing out these collections. So make sure you are cleaning up your binder and selling everything that is not a 90 plus live series. And you, you might be thinking, how can I be competitive if I'm selling all those cards, if I'm selling every card that I get? Truth be told is that there's so many playable cards in this game. Like, look, these Charisma Series cards, look at Kristen Yelich here. Look at his stats online. They're gaudy. They're absolutely insane. I can't get the, I, I have better stats against people than I do against the computer with Christian Yelich. You, have, you get so many good free cards in this game that you should just, you really should just sell. Like, let's see, let's see Judge over here. Like, I do love this Judge card. Besides, his defense is absolutely atrocious. But what's he going for? Look at his price. I oh, mean, I got him a lot cheaper than that. <laughs> told you, told you. Um, but it doesn't, if you haven't finished it yet, it doesn't mean that you can't. You, you can still employ a lot of these strategies as long as you haven't sold and just bought everything so far. So the other things that you d definitely need to do is you definitely need to do your programs. Go through your programs. So I have this finished. And the, and the funny thing is that I haven't really played the game in like four days for the most part. Uh, my, my wife is on the other side of the country right now and we have a toddler and she's been taking up all my time obviously and then by the time I put her to sleep I'm too exhausted to want to play like my eyes can't even focus so I barely played in the last four days. So we'll go to the uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk about some other methods on how I've been making a lot of stubs too and obviously yes it is flipping cards which does not sound fun. 
but make sure you finish all your programs. Not so much about the team affinity, although you do get some stubs along the way, I believe. No, you just get XP, which can help you if you're not done with the XP um, XP reward path. But you want to do your other programs. You want to make sure you're getting all the little packs, your conquests, your showdowns. Do all of that stuff. Do events. Do battle royale. Battle royale is always an easy way to make really quick stubs. You go through the entire thing you're, and you sell all those cards. You're definitely getting at least 150k. So you go through that each time. You'll be able to knock these things out. I do advise you try to get as much of this done, especially the expensive cards. Get as many of them bought before the April 21st roster update. Because that's when all hell breaks loose and the market goes crazy then. And you're going to see a lot of inflation. It's going to be a while before you... More than likely, it's going to be a while before you're able to get those cards. So try to get the most expensive cards. Go for Trout. Go for uh, Judge. Shohei. All, all those 90 pluses. Just go for them. Because if we look in the market real quickly, I'm pretty sure they have jumped... Up, most of them have jumped up in price here. Yeah, they're, they're really expensive right now. Most of these cards I got for way under 100k. When I packed Diaz, he was going for 70, I believe, or 68. And now he's at 92, and you, I don't really expect his price to go down because he's out for pretty much the entire year, if not the entire year. I think they said eight months, so he's probably not coming back. Scherzer and Verlander, they're worth a lot. They've been fluctuating. They've been between 80 and 95k generally. Mookie Betts is continuing to shoot up because he's playing really well in real life. Goldschmidt, Arenado, like, look at this. Like, well, obviously Arenado's uh, super boosted uh, right now. Um, so he's got the boost going on, but... I mean, whew, I'm going to get this card in my lineup currently. Jeez Louise. But yeah, they're going up. They're going up in price. you got to get these cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. These nine cards, ten cards actually, you got to get them. you got to get them as quickly as possible. Don't worry about any of this stuff. You look at these cards, they've all, they're all continuing to drop in price. You have a couple trajectories that go up a little bit, but then they're probably going to go back down right after. Don't worry about getting these cards. Just, just don't, except for Machado. Get Machado, they'll beat the Padres, because when Tatis comes back, this this is going to skyrocket. That collection is going to skyrocket. Um, so, yeah, uh, I would say, do that one. Do Machado. But other than that, just go for the big ones right now. Go for the big ones. So you might be saying, like, how did you do this no money spent just by selling every card that, that you probably wouldn't be able to do that? Not, and I'm selling every jersey, every piece of equipment, everything that is sellable, I am selling. That's the whole point, because all that stuff is going to go down in value, and especially in stuff that you're not even going to use it. If you're not going to use it, get rid of it. Who cares? If you want to be a collector, you can do that at the end of the game when it's worth nothing. So we're going to go into my flipping methods here. My orders. Completed orders. Look how many pages of orders I have. Almost a thousand. And mostly, if we look at my cells, they're small cells. And you might be thinking, wow, that sounds absolutely tedious. It's a little tedious, but not as tedious as you may think. So pretty much what I do is I go at night is probably the best time to do it. At night, at like right before you go to bed, go look for commons. What I like to do is I also do this on the companion app. If you did it, if you did it on the consoles, it would take you forever. The companion app is the only reason why I was able to do this. There, if if I could do this on the on the console, there's no way I would have I would have uh, taken the time to do it. That that takes way too long. So I don't I can't show you on my app, but what I will show you is basically what I do. So you filter, I do the max overall. I usually go to 64 and do live series, okay? And then you're pretty much just looking for large margins here, especially these ones like here that have zero. You can buy them for five stubs. And generally speaking, these cards stay about this. So I will go to sleep and I will pick maybe like 40 of these cards. And I will put $5 orders in. I mean five stub orders in. And I will get to 100 of them. And I will move on to the next one. And I will do that on a ton of cards. And you might be thinking, like, how are you going to make any money off that? Well, it, it's pretty much risk-free, because once you buy them, if it's not working out for you or, you or you need the stubs back really quick, you just quick sell them back for the same price that you did it. People will sell them to you for five, okay? Do I think that's silly? Yeah. They're, they're losing, well, I mean, they're losing out on one stub, but they're too lazy to click down once when they're, when they're packing those cards. Or they're selling now, and they're not realizing that there's a tax where you lose 10%. So whatever it is, they still do it. So I will do that, and I will buy for five or sometimes six if somebody there's a really nice margin there. But I'm sure we could actually find some margins here. Um, although I, I do say that the margins are best at night, okay? 
at night after dinner time, whether you're on the East Coast or the West Coast, I would say between like, if we're talking about Eastern time, between 7 and midnight is the best time to do it. And I guess on the West Coast, it would be, you know, probably from like 4 to midnight there would probably be the, the best times to, to do all of this. To try to see if we can see some good margins here. Because there are times I've sold cars, I've bought, I've bought like hundreds of cars at 5, at like 5 stubs a pop, and I was able to sell them for like 70, 80, 40. You make massive, massive uh, ROI on these on these investments. The return on them is absolutely insane. You know, like I see people say like buy golds, buy silvers. When you buy them, yeah, do they move pretty quickly? Sure, but I do this all at night. Look, look at this margin here on Ernie Clement, 72 to 18. Okay, it's not as good as some of the other margins, but it's a larger it's a larger amount. So maybe that will help you get there a little bit faster. But I say. Stick, it's like penny slots when you go to a casino. You hit it big, you're gonna hit it big, and you're not really risking much, right? So yeah, you, you look over here, and you look for the, and you try to buy these commons. Try to buy the commons, and you make a ton, because look, put it like this. Uh, 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 Steven Riding's over here is going for 25, right? You buy it for five. Now after the tax, I think they're gonna take two or three stubs. I, I, it's in the middle, they're probably gonna round up. So let's say they take three stubs right there, right? So that means you sell it, right? And you're gonna lose. You're gonna lose the three stubs there. So we're, gonna, we're already at minus. Well, let's already call it at twenty because you already invested five, right? You're gonna get. You're gonna make seventeen stubs there. Seventeen stubs on a five stub investment. Okay, you're getting two and a half times back on what you put in. You're not getting that with silvers and golds. And the thing with silvers and gold, the risk that you run is that people start hopping on those really quickly and drives those values down. And sometimes you actually wind up losing money or you have to wait a few days before you get it back because it's not moving that quickly or people just jumped in it so much and really undercut you and drove the prices down. So I say this is my big thing. And yes, there were a ton of orders, obviously 996 pages of orders here. But when you're using the app, you can literally just tap your finger. You're just tapping. You put the you put you don't have to type the number in over and over again. You type it in one time, five, and then you can just rapid fire. You can do this in minutes. I usually will spend like a half hour before bed putting in buy orders, and I go to sleep, and I hold it for the next day, and at about the same time where I was buying the day before, I sell them all. And you make a ton of stubs. And that's how I was able to do this without putting a dime into the game. And it's April 10th, and I just finished it today and I'm so happy that it's done. Last year I tried to just do as many collections as I could. I went like division by division, the cheaper collections first. I was no money spent then too and I was not able to complete the collections I think until mid-June or maybe even uh, maybe even mid-July. It was a while. It was a while. I remember it was, it was it was close to summertime by the time I finished it and now it's April. It's done. I can do whatever I want with this game at this point. Obviously, there's the set one flashbacks and legends collections, which I'm going to do, but I don't feel that I have to really grind for that as much anymore. I'm going to kind of let it happen organically now that I got this live series collection out of the way. And I really wanted that Jeter card. I really wanted that Sammy Sosa card. The Maguire card I've had for a couple days now. I'm, I haven't really figured out his, his swing too much, uh, but when we figure it out, it'll be a pretty fun card to use. So I want to know what strategies have you been using to actually complete live series. And where are you in your live series journey right now? I wanna know about the collections. How far are you? What are the highest rated cards that you have? Or if you have any other tips that you would like to share, maybe that I did not share, that has helped you complete collections, no money spent. All right, once again, if you're new to the channel and you like the content, click that subscribe button, give me a like, even and especially leave some comments like I said it helps with the algorithms it helps the channel it doesn't cost you anything and it also uh, provides some fun for me as well so once again hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you soon